Samantha, please tell us your story. The, the story I want to share is based on um, research that we've done with principals who are um, helping their schools use data to inform decision making and also uh, supporting teachers in collaboration. So I would say it's the, those, the, the idea is that, that, that principals would be among the supportive people to help teachers use data um, in ways that, that improve instruction. And um, in some analysis of these data recently, one of the things that really stands out is how emotional a process this is for, for principals because on a number of dimensions, one is the, the challenges that teams, teacher teams have in working together um, and the, the difficulties of getting staffing to align with what the principal's goals are for the school create a great deal of um, anguish for principals. And so when we've gathered these data, we hadn't necessarily focused on looking at emotions, but it's been really fascinating to see how the principals either get great excitement over hiring teachers that they feel are going to be able to do um, this work well, and conversely, others who feel very frustrated that sometimes they don't get to choose the teachers that they have at their schools. And this creates a lot of um, stress for them because they, you know, in earnest really want to make changes for kids and understand that that teacher role is pivotal. But also, you know, a lot of this reform relies on the re working relationships in between, between teachers. And so um, when those relationships are difficult or when teachers come and go from the school, it's hard to keep that momentum going because they have to build trust and transparency and, um, you know, a productive dialogue. And so there's that aspect of the principal role too, to try to configure and manage teams in ways that support what's happening. And then on another front, um, you know, one of the things with data informed decision-making is that they're often, it's often connected to broader accountability systems in the, at, at multiple levels. One is at least in the United States from the state level, um, they're being held accountable for student results. But then in the district level, often the district has what we call benchmark assess assessments to see how the students are doing in relation to the state test so that they can make sure they're ready. And um, often principals, experience different kinds of um, challenges, making sure that their teachers are both interested in giving those assessments and see value in them, but they also, you know, struggle because sometimes they, they feel personally very um, upset when their students don't do well. And so, you know, in the, the schools that I'm talking about are schools that were typically um, under pressure to improve their achievement. And so the principals took it very personally sometimes that the students weren't achieving well and found it, um, you know, just to be demoralizing for them and their teachers to be measured this way and to not show gains no matter how hard they were working. I think, um, you know, one of the things that that is interesting about this work is that we haven't typically paid attention to the role of principal of emotions in this work. So Vicki Park and I, my colleague, have been doing this work to try to understand um, you know, how, where, how and where principals can find support for the various different things that they're going through. And it's particularly important now because in the pandemic, as you know, principals are busy managing everybody else's emotional well, socio-emotional well-being, never mind their own. And so there's a lot of pressure for them to sort of kind of manage with all that they're dealing with um, as well. So another third topic I want to address on the same um, front is that the ideas of principles managing change. So in our analysis, we found that when changes were internally directed, meaning like the principal themselves led the change effort, they were much more positive and felt much more joyful about it. And when the changes came from the outside, there was oftentimes frustration if principals didn't see how to make it work in their schools or um, you know, saw the reform at cross purposes. And at the same time, if they felt like they were ahead of where the district was going, that on the one hand brought them pride, but on the other hand made them feel as though um, they wished the district would kind of get up to speed and do something more um, innovative, you know, for example. So there was a, a lot of emotion around that whole managing change process as well. So I would say that's the three areas is the managing change. There's the staffing and managing collaboration. 
And then the third piece is kind of, um, you know, the, the, the feelings that they have about accountability systems and where they sit. So, you know, I think that last one is hard because the principals, you know, understand that how important accountability is and, but yet they're sort of caught in the middle between different levels of policy in a way. And don't really have a leverage of what happens in the classroom, but are held accountable for what happens in the classroom. Well, I think the hard thing is when you're leading a school, you can't talk to your teachers about this. You may be the only one that you can discuss about this. So I think, you know, one important um, piece is kind of maintaining open dialogue with other principals. And sometimes there may be not even people in your own district, but having kind of forming networks. Some of those could be even virtual, but to think about how we could form cross, um, they can be, you know, kind of cross school networks where principals could work together and, um, you know, kind of seek, you know, we, they oftentimes would go to each other for advice on various things, but this could be a source of emotional support as well as they think through and kind of unpack and, you know, the various emotions. And one, there's a woman named Brenda Beatty who's done work maybe 20 years ago in Canada. And she looked at this topic, but she, I mean, her point was, if we ignore the emotional side of life, we do so at our own peril. You know, like this is an incredibly important part of the work that principals do. And I think it's more important than ever. In fact, just last week, we had 40 principals here at our campus and having, and I was discussing some of these ideas with them. And it was interesting because the district leader at the time was sort of saying like, you know, you gotta be strong, you have to be the person. And I understand that they're the leader of the school, but you could tell that particularly given what people have gone through in the last two years, they were really, you know, burnt out and struggling many of them. So it's a challenge right now, but I think the cross school networks is probably the best way to, to do that. And, to, and one can even analyze those with network analysis to kind of see who do you go to for emotional support? How does it play out? I've never done that kind of study, but I think it could be interesting. Most of the work we've done is qualitative interviews and observations. Mm -hmm.